Hello, everyone. Allison, are you with me? Thank you. All right, well, we are, let's go ahead and get started in this session. I, we are, or I am coming from you live from Gulf Shores, Alabama. I'm down here at the beach. Uh, Allison Tantz, my colleague, who will be uh, joining us. I'm Chris Reeves. I'm the uh, Executive Director of Academic, Academic Engagement Programs. I'm also the Director of Undergraduate Research and Student Innovation. And uh, Allison, you want to introduce yourself? Absolutely. I'm Allison Tan, and I'm the Program Manager for Undergraduate Research Opportunities, as well as the Program and Operations Manager for the Academic Engagement Programs Office. So, Chris, I'm going to turn it back over to you. All right. So this session is going to focus on undergraduate research. Uh, you've had the opportunity to join in on a lot of other Office of Undergraduate Education sessions today. And as you can see on the screen that Allison is sharing, if you weren't able to uh, see any of those sessions live today, uh, you can go to oue.gotech.edu facet and we will have um, the recorded sessions there. We'll also have some more live sessions uh, occurring this summer that you can tune into. So make sure you go to that website to get all the up-to-date information. Actually, immediately, immediately following this uh, presentation, we're going to do another presentation, which I'll be leading with my colleague, Risha Reed, uh, on student innovation and startups. And they're actually helping. Um, we have a few colleagues, Corey and Risha, and uh, a few students. I know Michael's with us today. Can, helping moderate some of the sessions. So for right now, as you, uh, everyone is muted, you'll be muted. And, uh, and if you have any questions, just place them in the chat there and we will try to answer them as we go through the chat as the presentation occurs, or if we can't get to them, then we'll answer them at the end and we'll see how many we get to. We'll stay uh, as close to time as possible because I, like I said, I have to join another session at 1.30. Uh, so we'll talk for about 25 minutes, and then we'll see if we can answer any more questions at the end. Uh, Allison, do you have any other housekeeping that you want to uh, – anything else worth mentioning? No, I just wanted to let you know that I have put in the chat box the student innovation uh, link for the Blue Jeans uh, event that's right after this one. If you want to join us for that one, you're welcome to, and I will let you go ahead and get started. We've got our first slide ready to go, Chris. Oh, I see. A, I see somebody already on the chat who's in Alabama right now, Pablo. So that's that's good to know. Uh, so, Alice, if you can go back to that one slide, maybe we just show that again. That's the Europe mailing list. And so, if you're interested in anything to do about with undergraduate research, you'll want to sign up for that. We'll show that again at the end of the presentation. And you can find all this presentation materials at our website, europe.gotech.edu, which we'll show at the end. But uh, but that's something you'll want to sign up for if you want to know. It's something we send out usually monthly high-level information stuff. So uh, so why don't we jump into a couple of slides here, Allison, to uh, what is research. Okay. All right. So, so I will start. Um, I'll have a few questions that we typically get. I'll cover those right now. And one, obviously, is what is research? So uh, when you think about research, a lot of times you, you think what it looks like on the screen there. It's you by yourself behind some microscope or magnification device. Actually, research is very collaborative. Uh, you'll be working with, at Georgia Tech, you work with other students, graduate students, research scientists, faculty. You might be in a lab with a few people. You might be in a lab with over 100 people. So at Georgia Tech, the research environment is very dynamic. It's not you by yourself. You're sharing your work. You're making mistakes. You're fixing those errors. Uh, errors. And then obviously, what you're trying to do is make some contribution to uh, create value, whether it's a product you're working on, or maybe it's actually just contributing to uh, our intellectual ability, contributing to the education that we have. So that's a little bit about uh, what research is. And let me tell you a few things about it. So if you want to be a scientist, you have to practice science, and that's research. If you want to be an engineer, you have to be designing solutions to problems, and that's research. Research is just getting your hands dirty. It's applying what you're learning about, studying about in the classroom in a real world environment. So one of the, I can tell you a, a bit of a secret is that so the overall budget at Georgia Tech, just so you have an idea, the overall budget is $2 billion per year, $2 billion. Over half of that is research. Research is what we do. It's what we do really well. 
And if you're not involved in research, you're basically missing half of what we do if you think of it in terms of dollar terms. So uh, to give you an idea of kind of what research looks like, we have to we just have a couple of slides. Obviously, if we were going to show you what all research looked like, we would we would have millions of slides. But some of you have seen this 3D printing. You can go to some of our 3D printing slots uh, sites uh, on campus. Uh, but you probably haven't seen a 3D printed device like this, where you have a microfluid device inside something that's been 3D printed, right? So that's the kind of things you can be involved in at Georgia Tech. Obviously, there's 3D printers all over cam campus, from commercial grade quality to to the standard ones you've seen before. Uh, and we what's the next slide? Also, okay, so we have small robots. We have big robots. We have people who look like robots, right? And so, and so any kind of robots that you can imagine at Georgia Tech, uh, or that you can imagine we have, we have robots that can perform surgery, we have robots that can fly, we have robots that can drive, robots that can tell jokes, robots that can play music, robots that can help people with disabilities put their clothes on. And that's mm -hmm. just robots. So, so there's many areas at Georgia Tech, and that, that, that's just an idea about the robots we have. And, and there's, what's our next slide, Allison? It's so wearables. Wear, wearables are a big thing. So we have wearables for humans. We have wearables for dogs. We can even put wearables on insects, right? And so that's just wearables. There's many other people doing wearables on campus, all the way from computer scientists to aerospace. Uh, so it doesn't, doesn't matter what your area is, it's happening somewhere on Georgia Tech in a research environment. Whether it's, I said, aerospace, computer science, you're doing surgical tools, it's happening in some amazing fashion uh, in wild, wildly different ways that can be applied that you're just not familiar with, or you may not be familiar with, but you have the opportunity to become familiar with and participate in at Georgia Tech. So, so that's it, gives you an idea of what research is and what it looks like at Georgia Tech. All right, so another question that we typically receive is why do research? There's actually been a lot of research done on students who do research, okay? And so, so the research shows students involved in research have higher GPAs, they don't drop out, they graduate more readily, they, have, they get higher paying jobs once they graduate, uh, they work better in teams, they also work better individually, they're also better at communicating their work both in the written word and verbally in students not involved in research. Students involved in research can uh, present their work at conferences. They can get published. They can get paid. Okay, so there's tons of reasons why you want to get involved in research. But I never covered the real reason. The real reason why you want to get involved in research is because you want to learn more. That's why you get involved. That's what students report back over and over and over again. I never thought I'd learn so much. You know, I was in a classroom environment reading about materials, what I was supposed to be studying, but it wasn't really I started, until I started applying that in an experimental environment that I really started connecting to the material and started learning. Okay. So that's what research is all about. It's all about learning, contributing to knowledge that we're trying to advance society. So those are lots of opportunities you can get involved in at Georgia Tech, and that's, a, and that's why you want to get involved. And you see the uh, we have a chart that shows uh, students at Georgia Tech. Yes, yeah, so you can see this. Um, we have more and more students getting involved in research at Georgia Tech than ever before. It goes up every year. We have more and more students getting involved in research earlier on in their academic careers as freshmen and sophomores. And this is actually a very conservative number. We have many more students involved in research than this number even shows. All right, so the next slide is how to get involved and when. So you get involved in research through the faculty. They are the gatekeepers to undergraduate research. So this is the most, most important thing I can, I can tell you about, and that is you've got to get to know your faculty. Your faculty can certainly help you get involved in research. They can also help you during your undergraduate career, career at Georgia Tech and when you leave in terms of letters of recommendation, in terms of future colleagues. So it's very important to get to know your faculty. Now, some students are, can be intimidated to approach faculty. So I'm going to tell you a story so you won't be intimidated. There was a, I was talking to a chair of the department one time. Uh, the department was top five in federal funding dollars. Huge department, tons of scientists, tons of labs. And so naturally, I was meeting with him to try to get more students in the labs. And, uh, and I asked him, I said, what do you want out of a student 
for them to come into your lab. You want a student that's got a high GPA, a student that's uh, done research before, taken certain classes. And he said, no, that's not important. He said, what I want is a student that shows up, gets along with everybody in the lab, and has a passion for the work. That's what I want. So luckily for you all, you have those three characteristics. You're dependable, you can communicate with other people, and you're passionate about the work. And that's all it takes 99.9% .9 of the time to get involved in research at Georgia Tech. And you already have those characteristics or you wouldn't be coming to Georgia Tech. So it's very easy to get involved in research. Don't be intimidated to approach faculty. The number one step, the very first step you have to take to get involved in research is you have to find a faculty member willing to advise you. That's your number one step. And you can find that in many different ways, some of which we'll talk about earlier. Uh, so next slide, we're talking about faculty uh, being your research advisor. So, so Allison, here's a couple of ways that you can get involved in research. You want to talk about the undergraduate research ambassadors? Absolutely. So we have a great group of students who are called the undergraduate research ambassadors. These are students like yourself who are actively involved with research, who sought a need for other students to talk to students about how to get started, uh, how to talk to a faculty member, what should I put in an email when I reach out to faculty member. You have thousands of things I can research at Georgia Tech. How do I know which uh, opportunity I want to pursue first? And those ambassadors are here to help you with that. They do office hours, which will be on the next slide. They also host workshops and seminars throughout the semester as well as doing an open house, uh, drop-in sessions, coffee talks, you name it, they're there to help you find an opportunity. And after you find an opportunity, help you figure out how to use that opportunity to publish, to present your research, to go to a conference, what funding is there available for you. Those are students like you who wanna make research the utmost number one priority here while you're at Tech. We also have other programs and grants. Chris, I'll let you talk about that. So yeah, so our office runs some programs and grants, and, and we'll talk a little more detail about that uh, as we go through. And then, uh, as, men, as Alex mentioned, a lot of times it's just student networking, whether it's with the undergraduate research ambassadors or not. You know, you're meeting professors, classes, you're running into graduate students. Uh, there's research being presented on campus all the time, distributed in many different ways. You can always join poster sessions or oral sessions to find out what research is going on. And when you go to those things, go to those things, you go with a purpose, right? Try to find something that interests you, and then find um, then get the contact information of that particular lab, and you can do some of your own work to see if this is something that, that you might want to follow up on. All right, so Allison, you want to go to the next slide here? Absolutely. And I'm getting ready to put this into the chat. So like I said, our undergraduate research ambassadors are currently doing what's called virtual office hours. Normally we do this on campus, but you know, COVID-19, we're all remote. So they have decided to do research uh, office hours for students uh, during the summer. So if you go to the Calendy site and look up URA GATEC, you can sign up for office hours with any of the ambassadors that have available times, and you can meet with them as early as starting tomorrow. Um, they're gonna be meeting with students throughout the summer to help you get started, and they can show you our database, our backdoor database that we have just for office hours students about what opportunities are available, uh, what might work best for your major, or even just to talk to you about what you can expect in the, your first few weeks, or even how to write an email to a faculty member. Chris, I'm going to move to the next slide so you can talk about research classes. All right, so we'll kind of pick up the pace here. So research, you can do research at Georgia, you can do research for academic credit, course credit, you know, you're paying tuition, you're getting academic credit, you're getting a grade. So you can do research for course credit. If you're doing research for course credit, uh, you will register for 2699 freshmen, sophomores, or 4699 junior seniors. The only thing that's missing there is the prefix. So if you're doing research in mechanical engineering, obviously it would be ME2699. If you're doing it in biology, it would be BIO2699. And it's like that across the board. So that's if you're doing research for academic credit. And most students do research for academic credit. Uh, about 80% or so. But remember, before you even register for this class, what you have to do is find a faculty member willing to advise you. And it's not a class, I just missed it. It's you doing, you're in the lab doing work, research, but you have to find a faculty member first and what they'll do is they'll open a section of this for you to sign up for. So that's the first step that you have to find. And then the other type of research, students do volunteer for research, but the other type of research is research for pay. And that's if you're getting a research assistantship and then uh, you still want to register for these two 
audit courses, 2698 for, again for freshmen, sophomores, 4698 for juniors and seniors. And so this is tuition free, it costs you nothing, but you wanna register for this anyway because it'll show up as a record on your transcript. Because if you don't officially register for anything, then no one officially knows you're doing research. So it's nice to have that on your transcript, again, tuition free, if you're getting paid to be involved in research because you, you can't get, do research for academic credit and get paid for that same research at the same time. That's something you cannot do. Um, but getting paid to be involved in research, you want to register that because then it would show up on your transcript and then you, when you go to graduate school, get a job, then you have that official record on there. All right, let's go to the next slide. I also want to talk about the research option, I believe. Okay, so the research option, this is a program that we coordinate through our office. Alice coordinates this directly. And you can be involved in research and not be a research option student. This is its own program. These are for students who want a more substantive research experience. And it shows up as a, once you finish the research option, it shows up on your transcript as a transcript designator uh, that goes with you. Uh, so the basic requirements are you have to do nine hours of research. Most research option students do more research than that anyway. You have to do uh, take two one-hour classes, and those classes are just to help you. Uh, one is the 4701 class is the research proposal writing. They help you write your research proposal. And the 4702 is thesis writing. They help you write your thesis, because as a research office student, you have to write a thesis. And then you have to get two faculty to approve your thesis, and then on your transcript, like I said, it'll say this student graduated the research option in biomedical engineering, or whatever it may be. And we have it in multiple schools and colleges uh, offer the research option. So one thing I will say, if you're interested, in, I know many of you already have uh, an interest in going to graduate school or professional school. That's kind of how all the students are these days. And so if that's your interest, you have to be doing research as an undergraduate. You have to be doing research as an undergraduate. Um, and the reason why I mentioned that is the research option is a nice segue into graduate school because you're conducting research, uh, you're having your own findings, you're writing up your findings, uh, which is exactly what you're doing in graduate school. You're reading about research, you're conducting research, and you're writing up your research results. This is a nice segue into that and as, an, as a nice credential. So the research option is open to any student, any student, but the three typical students I see involved in that are students who are interested in R&D as a career, research and develop as a career, or they're interested in going to uh, graduate school, professional school, or they're interested in getting published. So that's kind of generally three types, but again, it's open to any student. All right, so research funding, and this is something Allison is very familiar with because she just received what, what was the, what was, we had, we gave away Pure Salary, well, we are in the middle of Pure Salary yes. Review for the fall. We had how many applicants? We had 196 applications. That is a record number for fall. Yeah, so we had, a, we have, uh, we offer funding for students to be involved in research, and that's the Pure Salary Award. So up to, uh, you receive a $1,500 stipend per student per semester to do research. All right, and we award a total of about 200 to 300 of those per year. We had about 200 students apply for the fall, so we typically award about half of them. Um, the other type of award is pure travel awards. So this is, we will offset your costs up to $1,000 to present your research at an academic conference. This is one of our biggest growth areas. We have more and more students, undergraduate students, whose work and research is being accepted by professional societies to, to be presented at these conferences. It just shows what great work our current students do and what great work you'll do. Uh, and so we try to offset your costs up to $1,000 to go to those conferences. It's a competitive award. If you're doing research, if you're conducting research, you're presenting your research or publishing it. You can't do one without the other. And, uh, and I, I always use this as an example, and I'll, I'll hold up my iPhone. So everybody has one of these, correct? And I'm holding up an iPhone. And so just think of the inventor of the iPhone that look at this great thing I, I invented, I'm never gonna tell anybody about it. Well, we'd be in a mess, wouldn't we, right? So there's a lot of research went in the development of the iPhone, certainly. There's a lot of research goes in the development of every single consumer product that's met. That's why research is so important. And that's why you have to share your work with the world. You know, you get recognized, you find collaborators, uh, you commercialize your work. What do we end up with? The iPhones and every other consumer product that exists. So that's why we 
offset your travel costs to make sure you're sharing your work with the world. Okay. We, Chris, offer, uh, we offer some other, ten, uh, other events. So, Allison, you want to jump in here? Absolutely. So uh, every April we do a spring symposium uh, where undergraduate students can present your research either with a poster presentation or oral presentation. You present it to your peers, to graduate students, doctoral students, faculty. They all come around and hear what's going on. Um, as I mentioned, we have undergraduate research ambassador coffee hours and office hours, but the research office Europe, we also do presentation workshops, resume workshops. And last but not least, we do have GT1000 that's focused on undergraduate research uh, during the summer, during at night. We also have a couple of sessions of those during the fall. So you're welcome to sign up for those. And then Chris, right. what makes a successful undergraduate researcher? All right, and before I jump into that, I will uh, remember if you have any questions about research, make sure you're putting those in the chat and we'll try to address those on the flyer or at the end because we're getting close to the end here. And so, so Allison and I recently asked this question to some of our undergraduate research ambassadors just to find out, uh, you know, what makes for the most successful undergraduate research? What makes them most successful? And it's a few things, some of which is obvious, would be obvious. One is they're willing to learn. They're willing to come in, willing to participate. They ask thoughtful questions. You know, they're not shy in the lab. You know, they read scientific papers outside of the lab, which shows that they have a lot of interest trying to find additional materials, trying to add to their knowledge, trying to take the research the lab might be doing in a different direction or a new direction. So they're reading those scientific papers. And probably the number one thing, and I hear this over and over, is the best successful undergraduate researchers have very good, strong communication between them and their mentors, their graduate students, the faculty, the research scientists. They're communicating when things go well. They're communicating when things go wrong. The key is that they're communicating. They're showing up for lab meetings. They're participating. They're not uh, shy. They're not holding back. The really, I hear this over and over from graduate students that, you know, they need to hear from the undergraduate students to know that things are going well or how they're going, if they have questions. So make sure uh, to be successful in your lab, you want to be really communicating and really actively participating in the research. We have one other slide similar to this. We do. And so the other thing so, we asked, go ahead, Allison. No, the other thing is, you know, what are those common mistakes? So we asked this to the ambassadors too, and, and one's obviously, if you're, when you're looking for a research position, what you don't want to do is to spam all the faculty. Uh, what you want to do is you're looking for two to three faculty whose work interests you. And you can do that by meeting with undergraduate research ambassadors, all the faculty are profiled on the web. You can find out all the research that they do on the web. You can, um, and so find two or three faculty whose work interest, uh, interest you. And then you might want to do a little, little bit of your own uh, work on them, look at their lab websites, read about some of the research articles. You don't have to know the technical de details, but just have an idea. And then if that work interests you, then, then you might want to send a faculty member email and say, you know, I'm a undergraduate biomedical engineering major at Georgia Tech. I read about your research. I found it interesting for these reasons. So you can say something specific so they know you're not spamming everybody, that you can say something specific about their work. And you just want to then say, can I meet with you to talk about your research? That's what mm -hmm. you want to ask. Uh, you don't want to ask about an opportunity or a position yet because you you know you don't know this person very well or their research yet. But you want a meeting. We're going to have to talk about a meeting to find out more about the research. And then if that interests you, then then you might want to ask them after that meeting. You know how can you get involved? That that's and so don't spam the uh, all the faculty. Don't do homework during research hours. You do research during the time you're in research hours. You're wearing mm -hmm. the right protective and personal equipment that are there. And again, most common mistake not communicating with their mentors. You gotta have open communication line. Right, uh, so, so this is go ahead, go ahead. Um, I was just gonna say this is our slide with our information, our email addresses. You can see the Europe uh webpage, Europe.gotech.edu. Uh, we also have a mailbox, Europe at gotech.edu. Uh, 